Ace Early Years presents Top, Top Tips for Ofsted. Well, I'm not scared of Ofsted. Ofsted. <laughs> you may have seen that we've been blogging about our recent Ofsted inspection. Thanks very much for all your likes and comments and shares. It's been really interesting to share our experiences with you. So we have put together our top tips on surviving and managing an Ofsted inspection under the new framework. Now this is from an EYFS point of view. Um, don't forget every inspection is different, every inspector is different, but these are our top five tips. So here we go. Okay, tip number one, have an Ofsted file. Now, please don't panic. The file is not ours behind us. <laughs> um, make sure that your Ofsted file has lots of different in bits of information to show your journey. Uh, importantly, in your file, you'll have um, lots of data. So we've looked at the trends um, that we've had. Have your data go back over a couple of years as well. And make sure that you write down, for your own benefit, what you've done in relation to the trends and the things that you found. We also have copies of any CPD uh, courses or um, experiences that we've had over the last few years. Our EYFS action plan is in there and you'll want to make sure that's updated regularly throughout the year. We've also got um, moderation visits and uh, observations from lesson observations. Um, now we've been um, collecting our offset file for about three years since we were in special measures. So we've been uh, replacing things as they've happened or adding to them. We've also got uh, examples of our planning and how that's changed throughout, uh, throughout those three years. And we've also put in details of our vulnerable learners, the kinds of interventions that we've been delivering um, over the last couple of years and their successes as well. Tip number two, be honest but forceful. Now, it's really important you want the inspector to get a true reflection of your provision, but you're going to need to provide evidence if you say, we have done this or this is how it works, you want to be able to grab um, your file or grab whatever the evidence is, don't mention anything if you haven't got the evidence to back it up. Use your provision. Um, the inspector will ask you lots of questions whilst you're in the busy provision. Guide your inspector to displays. It might be the learning journals. It might be where you keep your planning. But please guide the inspector and talk to them about what you're doing. Yes, as soon, on our inspection, as soon as he walked through the door, we, we jumped at him with our folder and with um, the planning ne near him, actually. It was on the door. And we said, could we show you this? This is how it feeds in and we talked him very quickly through the process that we go through during our um, assessment observation planning. Yes, bombard them with your good practice because they will make sense of it and they make the links to the parts of the Ofsted framework. Just be proud of everything you do. They're coming to find out what you do and, and, and how great it is. Don't let them leave your room without telling them everything. Tip number three, don't change anything, be yourself. Yes, tighten up on everything by all means, but don't change anything. Keep your routines, your resources, your planning, um, exactly how you access the provision, keep exactly the same. Yes, as Anita said, don't go out of your way to... Um, create these amazing wowy um, lessons or sessions. Um, we learned this lesson the hard way, so to speak. Um, we had an observation a year or so before our, um, our inspection, and it was our head. We created a shape stealer who came to shield, uh, steal our shapes, and we had to go looking for them. But actually, it, it became a big deal for some children, and we ended up with five children crying. It has to go down as one of our worst moments ever. And thankfully, our head did find the funny side of it. But don't allow that opportunity because it could be an Ofsted inspector and it could go down like a lead balloon. Tip number four, 
number four, know your data. And um, have it in percentages, or at least that's what our Austin uh, inspector really wanted it. Um, now, you, will, you could do your data twice a year, but that will leave you with a huge gap in between that if you have an Austin inspection, you don't have progress of that year to hand to speak about really, really simply. You could use evidence from um, your observations and learning journeys, etc. But data is the easiest way of um, making progress clear. Yes, certainly have a very, very strong uh, clue about where your different groups are. So that will be the pupil premium children, your summer borns, boys, girls and SEN. Know where their gaps are and what you're doing to plug those gaps. Make sure you can talk about last year's data, um, starting points um, and the progress that was made, um, good levels of development. Uh, because you'll be asked about trends that you've noticed and then how you've tackled them moving into this year. Tip number five, know your vulnerable learners and in particular your pupil premium children. Yes, throughout our inspection, the inspector actually asked um, us to identify our pupil premium and they actually tracked two of our children. Um, so make sure that you know everything about that child, their family, their interests, uh, and certainly demonstrate your knowledge of, of any data that they came up with, uh, any preschool entry meetings, transition arrangements, and certainly what you're doing for them to, to, to help support them in their time at school. Now this was actually the bit that we didn't get outstanding on because the inspector felt that um, that we weren't demonstrating, we were using our data to ensure that progression was rapid enough. Um, and, it, and it came down to the fact that what he really wanted to see was um, this child written down, it needed to be this child will learn this, whatever it might be, this target, and it needed to be as specific as these numbers, one, two, three, four, what they look like, or um, they will know these letter sounds, M-A-S-T-P-I-N, and they needed to know these by a specific date, the specific date, and then how we were going to get them there, what support we were giving them. And certainly knowing what their next steps would be, although we know what a child's next steps are, and we can demonstrate that we provide interventions, it was just that real precision information wanted on the uh, intervention tracking sheets. And actually, speaking of next steps, it was really only in this area um, that the inspector talked about next steps, or rather where the child was moving on. They, they, weren't, they didn't ask to see specific next steps for any of the children. So when you get that call, don't panic. No, just make sure that you tighten everything up um, and, and be prepared to celebrate all the wonderful things you do. Make sure that all the adults that work across the provision share the same ethos, that they are all completely prepped in the routines um, and, and allow them to ask any questions uh, because they may also be nervous and feeling it as well. And if you are one of those people, well, like most people, that get nervous when you're observed, the only way you, you're going to feel better is if you are observed more. Trust us, we went through it, get other people to come in, SLT to come in, get governors and people from other schools, and it will get easier. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. Good and luck. Good luck. Bye. Bye.